This week on Field Blast, as the only guys with the balls to do it, we're taking on Wall Street. This week we're reviewing Money Monster, The Big Short and Margin Call. It's going to be a blast. Hello and welcome to Film Blast with me Gary and me Daryl and this week we're taking on Wall Street. We've got, what have we got Daryl? We have got Money Monster which is, we'll start off with that first, yep. then we're going to be going on to The Big Show mm -hmm. and then we've got a, quite an old film from uh, 2011. It was touch and go whether we were going to yeah, oh, include yeah. this one or not. But that's it's Margin Call. Yeah. They're all about the financial collapse, well, sort of about the financial collapse but all quite interesting mm -hmm. and I think we're going to have a good time. But anyway, well, yeah. so this should we get on with the view of Money Monster first, yeah? Yeah, I think let's go right, ahead. So Money this, let's start off with a bit of factoid. Ooh, factoid. Factoid time. I'm doing that like something. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. No, I'm not going to. It's just going to be that. No. no. <laughs> not yet anyway. We haven't figured that bit out. We're just, this is our mime act. We're yeah. actually, we're feeding factoid. some rope. <laughs> I have it a bit in my hand. I'm going to go factoid. <laughs> factoid. No, it's actually Thanks. a good little. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to write a factoid. <laughs> nice. Um, right, anyway, right. so Ooh, I love a bit of factoid time. Yeah, Ooh, so Money Monster is uh, directed by Jodie Foster. Yep, it is. It was on the 2014 Blacklist, which if Ooh. you don't know what the Blacklist I is... I do not know what the Blacklist it's is. It's the best unproduced uh, screenplays for that year. Okay, so what? So that's like scripts that have been written that year but haven't been yeah, made. So what, happens in, what happens in America, they, or in Hollywood, yeah. they always say it's not... Um, it's not the uh, directors that get films made, it's the assistants. They read all the scripts and then they, if they think it's good, they pass it on. Ah. Then they get to vote. They have a, the thing called the blacklist. They get to vote what their favourite is. The winners go on that. It's usually about 10 or 12 movies every year. Oh, right. So that was on the 2014 okay. blacklist. So that's a good, a good thing to know as well, that if something appears on a blacklist, it's a, it's a good chat within the next couple of years, it's going to be it out might, as, might, as Yeah, a it film. might be. Yeah, it okay. may be. This has got two Hollywood film stars who I think it was probably a bit too good for the film. It yeah. Was, uh, a bit too... Well, for characters that you're probably not supposed to like, or certainly one character... <laughs> yeah. So, you you got, so we've got George Clooney, we've got Julia Roberts, yeah. we've got Jack O'Connell. Yes. Um, we've got Dominic West. We've got... Um, who else have we got? Some Irish girl whose name is Caterine... I can't even... <laughs> it's got loads of vowels in it. I've, just, just too I'm many annoyed. vowels for our mouths to work out. It's... Yeah, but they're the sort of main people in it, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, I think you're you right. Sorted extras and people that you sort of character actors and bit parts. Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're, they're really, they're, yeah, as you said, they're the main. Oh, and um, Gustavo Fring, yeah, from Breaking Bad, although severely underused. But yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get I'll get to that in in my review as well. Right, so. One of the things we're going to do with every film now when we do a factoid is how many English people, <laughs> because of Green Room, how yes. many English people in this film are doing American accents? And in this film, two. Well, certainly British at least, or, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or within our aisles. And we've yeah, got... so we've got Jack O'Connell doing an American accent yep. and Dominic West doing an American accent, although you may say they're trying to do an American accent. Again, we'll leave that for the review part, but yeah, I think we're stretching the doing an American accent yeah. part here. But we've got... Two people have been in the way in this episode. We've got Dominic West and Chris Breaver, and we've got one person from Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Gustin Fring. Gustavo Fring's character, yeah, who is Gia Franco's Espirito. Es Espir 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 it's, 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 it's not Espirito, it's not, it's, it's, it's a highly offensive thing yeah. to say. <laughs> Espirito. <laughs> like it's Espirito, Espir yeah. Gustavo Fring. Um, so I think, is that the uh, is that the factoids? Yeah, that's the factoids. Oh, that's the factoids. Yeah. Done. Okay, so I think now we're going to get straight into the plot. Starring George Clooney, who is a host of a stocks show, essentially where they tell you where to invest your money, what stocks going up, what stocks going down. You see it. There's a uh, I think the real life guy goes around with a hammer. Yeah. Very much parried in that real life yeah, one, yeah. which I, for the life of me I can't remember what it is. He plays this 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 character that um, hosts the show. He's he's basically very juvenile in the way that he acts, even though he's talking about billions of, of dollars worth well, of money. Well, he's an entertainer, isn't he? Yeah, he's very much, it's not It's not a serious stocks and share show, it's an entertainment Same stocks and shares, share yeah, yeah, that yeah. aims for the general public that yeah. don't really understand stocks and shares. And yeah, I think exactly. that's kind of half the point of the film, isn't it? Is yeah. that he has duped people, yeah. mm -hmm. not intentionally necessarily, but he's duped people into investing in yeah. certain mm -hmm. stock that then goes belly up. Yes. And bring in... O'Connell, whose first name is just, just Jack, Jack O'Connell. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to call him Jerry O'Connell. Jeremy O'Connell. <laughs> yeah. He's essentially one of these people that's invested in stock um, 
as per George Clooney's recommendation, has gone belly up. And it's actually, they blame the belly up on this stock on an algorithm flaw, the algorithm that they use, in, which we'll go into more detail in the, in the other reviews. Which, funny enough, um, uh, Michael, Michael Lewis, who wrote the big short book, which the film oh, right. is based on, yeah. he wrote a film about Flash Boys, which is about high frequency trading. Yes. Which causes those crashes to happen. It's happened a couple of times, these crashes, where they've been glitching the system. So things can, can't happen like that, but mm. they neutrally write themselves. Yeah, exactly. So, so because the, the idea from watching all three of these films of high frequency trading is you're in and out before you get a chance to lose yes, that much yeah, money. Yeah. Um, now, the, the idea of this film, remember, we are a spoiler show because we don't believe that knowing how a film ends should affect the way the story is told. Yes, the journey. The journey. They're there for the journey, not for the conclusion. Not for the conclusion. What we find out is that actually, although they're blaming it on an algorithm flaws to why they've lost 800 million. It's obviously some CD yeah, some, under some, yeah, yeah, someone's some. taken 800 million, invested in something that goes belly up. Jack O'Connell goes in, he takes over the TV studio, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and he essentially with a gun, straps a bomb to George Clooney's character, and essentially the film is him wanting to get answers. He wants to know why it is that he invested in this stock, 60,000 it was, wasn't it? Yeah, His mother's grand. inheritance. He's invested in stock and he wants to know how 800 million can just disappear. It doesn't. You don't just lose 800 million. It's time for views. I, I think it's time and for views. I want. To, let me just start off by saying because I know you've got something you want to say. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can see me chomping at the bit there. I quite enjoyed this film, but it's all over the fucking. It does not know what it wants to be. I think the script was written as a like a thriller. You yeah, know what I, I mean, I originally think... like a like a. A social like, commentary film, yeah, like, definitely. Like yeah, like a Scorsese-esque type thriller. Yeah. When it was originally written, I feel you get that sort of feeling. Yeah. Well, from certainly it. we've, you know, uh, at the end of it, he's walking down the street with, you know, he's got the bomb uh, jacket on, they've got a gun. It feels almost yeah. a bit like heat in a way, you know, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, like, kind like of dog die afternoon yeah. or something like that, like a seventies sort of thriller. Yep. Yeah. But it's not. It's really not. And you might think, oh, it's like a like a financial like dissertative satire. Nope. No, no. Is it a tragedy? Kind of is a tragedy, but then the film, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, at the end of the film, you're like, um, are we supposed to be unsad? Is yeah, that, like, it what? doesn't. But it was is. quite funny, and George Clooney and Julia Roberts are watchable. And I thought Jack O'Connor was quite watchable. Don't know about the plot bit that they introduce sort of starts to unravel two thirds of the way of the film and you think to yourself well this is a bit late for this bit yeah. this probably should have come a bit earlier yes. yeah. and that reveal was a little bit I was like really? There is definitely an identity crisis oh, in this film completely. It, it doesn't know it's, 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 it goes serious it tries to pull on your heartstrings and then it wants to make you laugh almost instantly afterwards I'm yeah. thinking what, what am I watching it? It gives you the thriller of them them you know, walking down the street, he's got a bomb strapped yeah, to his chest. Yeah, like. and all of a sudden he leans over and tells him, by the way, this isn't a real bomb. So <laughs> it, it removes all tension <laughs> yeah, a, a, yeah. away from the scene instantly. You get, you're, you're absolutely right. The the big reveal, the, the fact that this 800 million has been stolen, it was invested poorly, that only comes right at the end. You yeah. know, that this guy, and he's introduced right at the end, and then there seems to be no remorse from him. Jack O'Connell's character dies in the end. He gets shot. Yeah. Stupidly. He didn't have a bomb on him, so he was a fucking idiot yeah. in the first place. He just said, this is not a bomb. And they, to the other bloke, we said, oh, yeah, this is not a bomb. And then no one got shot. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. So he's dead. Yeah. His money's gone. People lost 800 million. His, his, his girlfriend's pregnant. Girlfriend Who pregnant. rips him to pieces. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, so that is the best scene in the yeah, whole that film. That is the best scene in the film. <laughs> Emily Mead, who plays his girlfriend, comes on. They think, oh, she'll talk him down. They put, <laughs> put him on the video screen. <laughs> she just rips that <laughs> living fucking like, shit out of him. You fucking idiot. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And she's like, you're you a cried. small dick to play yeah. like You cried during sex. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we get to the end of it. Jack O'Connell's dead with leaving behind a baby. He's lost 60 grand. The guy who, um, who's embezzled 800 million, essentially. Yeah. There's like an after note of like, oh yeah, you know, we're going to have a look at him. Yeah, he's going to be investigated. Yeah, and George Clooney, it's not like he's had some bigger... Well, that's the worst part about it, is Julia Roberts' character is is leaving him at yeah, the start. Yeah. She's the one who has an epiphany. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, like, he doesn't have epiphany. He doesn't sit there and go, oh, maybe we should be like not doing this for entertainment, blah, blah. She's like, no. he's like can we stay and do this all again tomorrow? Yeah, She's exactly. like, sure. Yeah. Don't matter how many people die yeah, or exactly. lose money. Who no, gives a shit? Fuck, fuck it. What the fuck? Exactly. Hey. Bollocks. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's of... how you feel at the end of the film. Yes. You feel bollocks. bollocks. It was a bad ending. I must have got to the end and I was just like, what? what? It should have been either margin call or trading places. 
Yes, and yeah. it wasn't either. And it wasn't either. I think no. if they've gone full, sort of big, sort of, not big comedy, but like, you know what I mean? I'm just going to give it my review. And Daryl has come up with a brilliant review system. We're yes. going to give you three markings yep. for it. Three choices. There's a potential fourth one, but hopefully we'll never have to use that one. Yeah, because we won't choose a film that shit to watch. Exactly. The ranking systems are, wait for TV, three. go to a £4 cinema, pay £12 <laughs> for a ticket. <laughs> yes. Okay. This, for me, is a wait for TV. Definitely. I enjoyed it, but it is all over the place. Wait for TV. Yeah. So we're saying to you that, look, you're going to watch it. If you haven't paid for it, it's not a bad little Sunday yeah, afternoon. Yeah. I've got yeah. a hangover. It's only 90 minutes. Yeah. You won't laugh a couple of times. It's always interesting to watch stars. Well, be funny, yeah. you know. Yeah. Little couple of little jokes. But yeah. yeah, do not go for it in the cinema. There's better films about those sort of situations. Yeah. Loads of times. Right. So it's not in third or first or second at the moment because we haven't got the others. No. But it's sitting there at the moment. It's in the middle of our, our little um, column. Yeah. And it's got Wait for TV. Yeah. So Daryl, I think we're going to move on to our next one now. Right, also, it's time for the big show. Right, okay. Don't know why I said that so excited. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, yes. Gets me oh, hard. Yeah. Math. <laughs> really complicated. Oh, yeah. Really complicated stuff about money. Oh. Oh, math. They call it the new meth. <laughs> right. So, Daryl, tell us your factoids. Factoids. Right, the big show is um, directed by Adam McKay. Okay, who, yeah. if you don't know, was uh, one of the main writers of uh, Saturday Night Live during the Will Ferrell Oh. In fact, he's one of Will Ferrell's best friends. Yeah, because made... he, he directed Step Brothers and Anchorman and 1 Anchorman, and 2. Yep, yeah, Anchorman 1 and 2, and um, probably lots of others. Most of those films that Will Ferrell did, yeah. where they do a bit of improvising. And yeah. Written by Michael Lewis, who also wrote Moneyball, and it's produced by Brad Pitt, who also produced Moneyball. So I think you'll find that... Mm, uh, Brad Pitt likes Michael Lewis books, so mm. if they, his latest book's called Flash Boys, which is all about high frequency trading. Uh, a right. uh, really good book, I recommend it. I do like a book about finance. So if they're going to make a movie out of that, I reckon Brad Pitt's going to be in it and he's going to produce it. Uh, that's, ah. that's, a, that's a good tip. If you see a film and Brad Pitt's in it and he's only like a bit part, so like 12 years a slave or something, it's because he produced it. Yeah. It's, it's time this for film has <laughs> got a star studded cast. It's got Steve Carell, the aforementioned Brad Pitt, it's got Ryan Gosling, <laughs> Steve Carell, yes. Brad Pitt, yes. Brad Pitt, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Gosling. <laughs> he stole these up for time, trying to remember if he can remember something there. <laughs> Bow! Yeah, and Christian Bow, of course. <laughs> and Rafe Spall. Yes. So, people, English people doing an American accent in the film, one, Rafe Spall. Rafe Spall. People yeah. from The Wire in this film? Zero. Zero. Okay, and people from Breaking Bad. Zero. Right, okay, so we're going to go through the plot, which I think you're going to be better explained than I am. Right, so while I explain to you the plot, because it's a bit complicated, that's what the film does. Here's a picture of oh, my dog in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> right, the plot of this movie is. <sighs> Here we go. Deep breath, Del. Deep breath. Right, they were selling mortgages. To everybody because what you could do is you sell a mortgage to someone then that person would take that mortgage put it into a uh, an investment scheme and then sell that to an investor but then what they did is then they got all these mortgages together and put them together you've got a b's and c's and got double a's double b's double c's and that's that's in terms of how good of yeah, a loan how, it is. yeah how safe it is so these are the guys who figured out that the tranches that the, tra yeah. the, 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 the all the mortgages that they were toxic and they were going to fail so they mm -hmm. decide they're going to bet against it. Yep. There's lots of things. There's CDOs. There's all these different credit default swaps. There's all this jargon in it. Now, this story takes three different groups of people mm. who bet against it. You've got Brad Pitt and two other blokes I can't, whose names I can't remember. Chris and something, most probably. Christian Bale's character. Christian Bale's, who's a doctor. He who, notices it, yeah. but nobody pays Christian attention. Bale's character in the, the book is quite an interesting character because he wrote, he actually just wrote a blog about... Um, eventually about trading blah 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 and oh, he got right. so popular that people yeah. started giving him money and he set up Sion that's how it started he ah. was just actually a doctor he's got a glass eye he's a bit of a weirdo he likes yeah. listening to metal drumming he's got you know what I mean yeah. doesn't wish and then you've got Steve Car Carell who's a bit of a his brother's died in an unfortunate accident and committed suicide so he's a, so he's a, like a, a crusader against yes. the financial but yeah. he's also worked in the financial thing yeah. And then his team. It's not like got, he isn't going to make money. He's, he's yeah. not. It's not like he's not interested. Yeah. And he's got his own team inside Morgan Stanley, and they are 
with um, Ryan Gosling's character. Who, who's he's a bit of a wheeler dealer kind yeah, of like. Yeah, he, he's he, the one who helps him buy some swaps. Facilitates it, doesn't yeah, he? He's, it. he's the facilitator. That, he's also the one who tends to turn around and talk to the third wall. Yeah, yeah. And, and he'll, he'll kind of... Yeah, but, well, yeah and that's, that's another real part of the plot, plot isn't it? Is that yeah. it's, there's a lot of... There's a lot of hand-holding during this film to, to help you understand what's happening and what they're doing and the way in which they do it again we'll go in, we'll talk about this more in our views is to break the fourth wall and either have one of the characters directly tell you or bring on another actor or actress yeah. mm -hmm. to explain what it is they're talking about now I'm going to start with my views because I think yeah. I'm going to be a little bit more succinct um, than yourself that you've got okay, a bit yeah. more to say about it I like the film I thought the way in which uh, certainly I have an experience of working in the market and knowing how convoluted some of the terms can sound to people and, 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 and all the jargon can be, I liked the way that they, they showed you. They broke the fourth wall, they brought you in. I thought it was, they had some good characters in there that they made me care about, like Steve, Steve Carell's character. I liked uh, Christian Bale's performance. I thought, yeah, again, he's, he's put his body through it. Overall, I just felt that going through the film, and I must admit to the camera here, going with memory of a couple of months back when I first watched it, but I just felt the pacing was good. I felt that the, um, I, I just felt that it was a well-told story and it certainly made something that was so disastrous for the world kind of enjoyable. And that's where I'm going to kind of leave okay. my view. Right. Right. It's, it's going to take a while. It's going to, it's going to take a while. Bear with me. I am going somewhere. There's a podcast. Right. Called Planet Money. Right. Back when the back in two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, eleven, when it sort of happened, it was a really good podcast. Two thousand six, two thousand seven. Yeah. Yeah. I know all of how all, all the actual financial thing was because I used to listen to that podcast. Ah, okay. Some of those people who used to do that podcast left and did Gimlet Media, which is like a New York podcast darling now. It's a big podcast thing. One of the guys on that is called Adam Davis. Right. He met Adam McKay because he was the creative consultant explaining to him all the jargon how everything works. We do, yeah. And they now do a podcast on Gimlet that's called yeah. Surprisingly Awesome and they explain to you stiff stuff that may seem boring okay. and then they tell you how it's going to be like how it's actually quite interesting. Yeah. That podcast is what this film should have been. Ah. Okay. Because it explains to you it's thing. this film goes out of its way to try to explain things to you and tries to sugarcoat it tries to think to yourself, it's a bit of medicine, so we're going to put a little bit of sugar in it for you. But those people who need a bit of sugar to take their medicine are not going to watch this movie because it's about financial <laughs> stuff they don't understand. I do. I like Margot Robbie as much as the next man. She is charismatic. She's beautiful. I, I, I really, I think she's brilliant. Yeah, she's I think lovely. you think, think you've thought of a film, she, she brings it up. Do not need to see her in a bar drinking champagne. Sometimes the third wall break in, I understand, like, Andy Bourdain goes, oh, you get all the fish, they have fish heads, which are all the shitty, toxic things, you put them in a the soup. Yeah, yeah. You see, they are, that's what I liked about it. I liked the fact that they showed you that... I mean, they try to explain things to you, but then at the end, when everything starts to go a bit wrong, no one's explaining to you anything. It's like, <laughs> what CDO swaps, what? Well, he's like, well, we're waiting for this credit swaps to her thing, we're going to sell them. But I thought the whole point of the swaps was when they defaulted, you got the money back back for it. So why would you want to sell them back to them for? You'd want to keep the money. It's half a film and half a book on tape. You know mm. what I mean? It's half an audio book yeah, and half I know a film. exactly what you I, mean, yeah. Sometimes I was like, I want it to be more of a film. I know it's like based on true life and these are the, and in the book, those are the characters. So you've got to go with the characters. But at the same time, I was just like, I think you don't need Brad Pitt and the other two guys' characters. And no, maybe you don't yeah. really need Christian Bale. Maybe you could have just stuck with the Steve Carell storyline with Ryan Gosling. I like Ryan Gosling in this film. I, I thought Ryan Gosling, which is funny because I haven't liked Ryan Gosling in, in, since Drive. I'm not a massive fan of Christian Bale. Oh. I like him in The Prestige. Oh, I love him, in, which will be, again, <laughs> another nod to a future review we're doing. But um, I like him, but I just, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of him as everybody else is. Right. Oh, fuck. Two people. You oh. always forget Christian Bell's <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, I'm not going back in any. No, that no, we're in. not. No, we're not. We're just, just that's a, there. You go. Look, we forgot. For all those that want to damn us in the comments, we forgot. Well, I think he's Welsh actually, but he's British. Yeah, yeah, he's, exactly. He's, yeah. But you always forget that he actually is. This shows the beauty of this show, is that we don't always agree. Yeah. Because audiences don't always yeah, no, agree. I mean, I do like the film, but I just think 
like parts of it are trying to be clever with like the breaking the fourth wall. But if you were really clever, you'd find a better way of doing it. It's like it's mock clever, you know what I mean? It's like, mm. oh, look how clever we are. We're breaking the... Yeah, but fucking, fucking people break the fourth wall all the time. You but know what I mean? I, Here's I, Margot Robin the buff. Aren't we funny? Huh? No. But how else... I mean, if you think about it, how else would they have somebody walk in that doesn't know what they're... Oh, actually, I'll, again, I'll explain something in margin call that yeah, wound yeah, me up. That, but, yeah. but you could... To do it in scene is difficult without devaluing oh, yeah. certain characters. But maybe characters. just have Ryan Gosling doing all those bits in it. And then maybe just no, one that, character. That was it's one... just the Margot Robbie... They just, took, they just took me out of it a little yeah. bit. I think they could have done it's, that bit. It takes, you out, it, it takes you out of the film because it actually cuts away from the film. You know what I mean? It actually takes you out of it. Yeah. No, you're all right. It does take you out of the flow of it a bit. And, and it, it takes you out of it. It's like, it's, give, you know, it's like, right, we're going to throw stuff at you. We know it's medicine. We know it might be hard to understand. But Margot Robbie's in the bath. And you're like, yeah, but... It's... Yeah. The fucking editing is all over the place. <laughs> it's like the most weirdly creatively <laughs> edited film ever. Like... <laughs> I think they said they were trying to do it docu-style, so right, like, put yeah. together like a documentary, so like no scenes that they just kept re- filming when it, so like people weren't hitting marks and shit, so that's why it's so weirdly edited, but it, it's a bit strange, the editing. Sound design more than the actual editing, like people would speak and they'd finish speaking and it would cut and it'd show the next scene and oh, weird. really weird. Whoever no, the sound was... editing was, was a bit strange. But yeah, that does sound Yeah, bad. that's what I say, it's a, it's a good film, it's just, of all these sort of um, financial films, I don't think it's... The book, go read the book. If you don't want to read the book, get the audio book, hello. You sort of... Actually, I think if you watch the film, then listen to the book, you'll sort of get more enjoyment out of the book because the book switches between the characters so quickly. Ah, uh, right, and then you, you won't lose change. track of what so characters you remember, what? Oh, that's, that's the Christian Bale character, that's the secret. I mean, it's always quite interesting to visualise people that yeah. if you've got a, like, a thing about, mm. you know, if you've got a, like, a visual picture of their mind when you're reading something, it's easier to... Yes, as opposed to the reverse where you've already read it and you create a visual picture yeah, yeah, and exactly. you don't like what you see when it exactly. gets made into a yeah. film. A review of it, um, I'll, I'll start and I'll say, you know, look, it's not a £12 cinema film. I think I'd have been felt cheated. It's not a cinema experience No, it's not me. a cinema experience. Um, it's, but... Uh, I think it's better than wait for TV. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to give it a four pound cinema. That's that's my or idea. maybe a four pound rent on Netflix. No, or, not not Netflix on oh, like uh, iTunes. iTunes, like, yeah. Like if you've got your Apple TV, you see you sitting yeah. there going, oh yeah, we'll watch that. Yeah, I four pound. Yeah, if you've if you've sat there, if you spent four pounds to watch this film, you're not going to get to the end of it. And go, oh, I wish I had my four pound. You'll you'll enjoy it. Yeah. It's an enjoyable film. Yeah. So that puts it second. Yeah. So we got Money Monster in third. Second is Big Short. Will it end up first? Will it stay second? Yeah, well, no. Let's have a it's probably going to be a bit of a margin call. Hey! Hey! I have been trying to slip that in there. <laughs> <laughs> the whole show. <laughs>Tucci. Yes. It's also been sacked. Yep. Why, why he goes, he gives Zachary Quinto yep. his character, who I, I forget, I can't remember their name. Zach gives him a flash. Yep. There's something I think you want to have a look at. Have a look at this. Yeah. Zachary then. Be uh, careful. Yeah, be careful. Zach looks at it, realises, oh shit, we're fucked. Yep. Like if we if we went under this certain margin, like certain specifics, we're, we're doing the shit. We are in that shit. We're heading to that point. Yep. 
That's he then, he then tells his boss. Um, does he tell Kevin Spacey or does he tell Paul Bettany? Uh, and Paul he, tells, Bettany? he actually first tells his colleague yeah. who brings Paul Bettany back, back with him. Yeah, yeah. And then Paul Bettany then... Yeah. And then everybody tells their boss upwards yeah, yeah. from there. And then it carries on through the night. Stanley Tooch has gone home. Someone has to go find him. Yep. Um, they all realise they're in the shitter, that the company's fucked, basically. Yeah. They all start blaming each other. People get cut. It's kind of a bit cutthroat. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. And pretty then and then they work out what their strategy going forward is. Yeah, which is to fuck themselves, sell all the stock. Yeah. As quickly as they can possibly can before anyone realises what they've done. Yeah. So and it's... the money. They're basically, the whole point, they look at it and go, everybody's going to get fucked here, not just us. Yeah. But rather we are the we first, first. first to be yeah. fucked than get sloppy seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's basically, the, the line is used a couple of times, better to be first out of the door yeah, than not out of the door at, at all. all. Yeah. Yeah, so. And it's smacking you in the face. I couldn't decide whether I like this film or not. And that's probably the, the, the opening thing I can say about it. Right, okay. Coming off the big short where, now I watch these films in the wrong order. You, yeah, well, you watch the big show, then you watch, and then you've watched Margin Call. Margin Call, which does not dumb it down at all. And we mentioned earlier about surely uh, Big Short didn't have to have his other characters coming in the fourth yeah. wall break. Mm-hmm. We could have just had, you know, they the way Margin Call does it is bring somebody on that's not as intelligent as a guy that's speaking and get them to kind of dumb it down. But even then, they really don't dumb it down. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it is kind of if you're not. Jeremy Irons says these immortal words, explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that, and that's not until the end of the film. Yeah, yeah, it's not until the end of the end. Yeah, where he literally just says, so you've, you've been sitting there now for about an hour and a half. Listen to someone who's a rocket scientist. Yes, yes, an actual, actual rocket, rocket scientist. scientist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and that's kind of it. And having watched it again last night, I actually quite appreciated that. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I thought it's saying to its audience, look, you know, if you don't understand it, you're no different really to the rest of the people here because that's why they're in this mess. Yeah. They just didn't understand, understand what they were getting no, into. It's, it's, they, they think it's called the black box. And they say it in, what do they say? I think they said it in Money Matters where they say things to confuse you, but really mm. they don't really know themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they've, it become, it's become so complicated the way the financial systems work, which is probably one of the reasons why they big short they have to keep split. Like they explain to you about the C, uh, CDOs, yeah, the effect CDOs, and it's like, oh, explain it yeah. back and forth, you know. Exactly, what I mean? yeah. Someone sells it to someone. It's become so complicated, they're so mixed up that how are you even going to know? Because it's all money for old rope. It, but it's what you do at the end, it's that margin call, it's what you say at the end. It's like, yeah. that's the most important bit. It's not how much money was won or lost, or who, it's at the very end, do we sit on the pot? Yeah. Or do we get do off? We, yeah. 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 Do, do, we, it, do we stick or twist? Yeah. That exactly. really is. And that's... And it's knowing when to stick or twist. And and I think you've you have really have surmised that film brilliantly there, Daryl. And that I know it's called Margin Call and it's kind of self-explanatory. But that is the whole point, is that they they are talking billions here. And potentially the whole company going out of business, certainly losing all their customers. Because they're going to have to shaft some people and right. shaft some people hard. Yes. It's Kevin Spacey. He's brilliant in it. And actually, the reason I wanted to mention House of Cards earlier is I've only ever seen the opening episode, the first episode, maybe even the opening sequence of the first episode. The dog's been run over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see that the his character doesn't he just kills a dog, doesn't he? You know, he he just says, Well, better put it out of its misery, kills the dog. That's his that's Kevin Spacey's character in House of Cards. Oh yeah, I forgot about the dog in in House of Cards. Yeah, and in in almost parallel in margin call, Mm -hmm. you see that his character really cares about the people. He yeah. does not yeah. want to be shafted no, these no. people. He works in risk to avoid these kind of situations mm-hmm. having to happen. And it starts with, the only reason he's going along with it is because he's got a dog that's just been diagnosed with cancer or I think it's yeah. on the liver and stuff and he's spending a thousand dollars to keep it alive. Yeah, exactly. So rather than put it out of his misery, so it is almost, and I think again that shows you the range of Kevin Spacey. Oh yeah. I love how sort of crisp it is. It's very, you know what I mean? Having worked in offices, the look's right do you know what oh, I mean? yeah, that, yeah. I've worked in sales offices. The look is right. It did feel, and it did feel like you were like no more... one's too, everyone's sort of treading lightly. Everyone's yes, sort of, yeah. Well, everyone's speaking like you know what I mean. Well, it's a great line, isn't it, with Jeremy Irons? Again, I mean, Jer- I like when someone Jeremy says Jeremy Irons. What's his characters brought into the fray? They say, look, whatever you do, just tell him the truth. Don't sugarcoat anything, and whatever you do, don't think you're smarter than him. Nobody in this room is smarter than him. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of, and I like, I like that the fact that each person, Zachary Quinto's 
doesn't really want to tell Paul Bettany because he's yeah. Paul Bettany doesn't really want to tell Sam. Yeah, yeah, Sam yeah. doesn't really want to tell the guy from the Mentalist. Yeah. The Mentalist guy doesn't really want to tell Jeremy Irons. They're all kind of scared, and that's really how they got into these situations. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, no one wants to tell. There's a bit in Silicon Valley where no one's telling anything. Right, yeah. I thought you told him. I thought you told him. I thought you told him. Like, yeah. No one wants to tell anyone. Like, so like exactly. And, and so, so the 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 analogy there from Silicon Valley is exactly yeah. what this film's yeah. like. Um, Funny enough, the bit that is the most humanising of the whole film is the bit that I think if you cut it from the end of the film, the film would be so much better. It's him burying the dog in the rain in the garden. I don't understand. Still, still that bit seems a bit heavy-handed. Well, like, that, that like burying the dead dog yeah. that was the final. You know, it was the yeah. company at the end. Yeah, oh, it was very on the fucking nose, wasn't it? It was really yeah, like, yeah. oh, if you if you haven't quite got it, this is us burying the whole financial yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Bur- Him also burying his conscience as well because yeah, he's, yeah. he's having to go. He doesn't. Kevin Spacey, who's burying the dog, does not want to do this. It was all a scene where it says, yes, you know, he he's burying his conscience. He's burying. You know the financial system. He's. It's also. He's only doing it for the money. So let's take him to his ex-wife's house yeah. and bury him in the garden and show that she's got this massive house and he doesn't live here anymore. Yeah. And it's all kind of. Yeah, you're right. It didn't need that scene. We know the dog's dying. We know yeah. he's doing it. It just. It was a little bit too on the nose. Yeah, it was. So go on to 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 the review because I think we've kind of gone for it enough. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> for me. I think it deserves more than a wait for it on TV. Yeah. Uh, it's not a £12 cinema job. I mean, not even if we're talking about the experience. Just for a film alone, it's a £4 jobby. Uh, but for me, not as good as The Big Short. Yeah, just just not as good. That's So I'm going to put it in second place. Right. It's one of my favourite films. I've seen it 13 times. <laughs> I'm like, what, I'm like, I'll be bored. I'll be, what should I do? I'll just watch Margie Call again. I fucking love it. I don't know why. I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's, yeah, I like, I think it's something about the, the brittleness. As I said, it's like, I can't, it's really hard to explain. Yeah. I haven't taken field criticism in school, so it's hard for me to sort of try to sort of explain what it is. Yeah. It's, Maybe because I've never worked in an office, but it's that this is sort of crisp. You know what I mean? There's a, an inhumane sort of like people walking oh, through office in the music and everything. Yeah, and it's in, in all this is happening at two, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, and that's and a still, there's that's, this... Yeah, that's a still crispness to it. Like yeah. there's no sort of shouting or what's it called? It's people looking at computer screens. It's it's the. It's, I want it's, to see. Perfect, do you know what the analogy is? Is again going back to Jeremy Irons' character. What, I feel it's very Fincher, and I like Fincher. That's probably what it is. Possibly. Picturesque. Yeah. yeah. He does that sort of thing very well. well like, the, like if you watch good you watch Gone Girl, it's got the same sort of vibe to it or something. I have said it already. Jeremy Irons' character really ties it all together. Yeah. And you just said you like the kind of the stillness, the silence. Yeah, the, And do you know what? It's only just clicked for me. Very, Jeremy Irons' character, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. he says, I'm paid the big bucks to predict what the music's gonna do, the financial yeah. markets. Yeah. What's the world gonna do? Mm-hmm. And and Zachary Quinto, and he says to him, so basically, we're playing a game of musical chairs. It says this, Jeremy Irons says this to Zachary Quinto, we're playing a game of musical chairs, and the music just stopped, and we're holding the biggest bag of shit the world's ever seen. And Zachary Quinto says, well, to use your analogy, we're playing a game, and the music slowed down, it hasn't stopped, because if the music stops, we're in far more trouble than we are in yeah. at the moment. And then Jeremy Irons says, that's the problem, I can't hear any music. And isn't that kind of surmise... The whole film is that silence, that kind of yeah. s- the silence realization. Yeah, yeah, it's when when something kind of suddenly hits you, you don't scream, you don't shout, you're shocked into silence. Yes, yeah, so, oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So for me, this film's got a very Stanley Kubrick, David Fincher feel. You know, what I mean, very inhumane, very like there's not a lot of emotion. Yes, everything's very everything. You look, look at the way everything's shot. Like it's very crisp down the middle. Like everything's like smooth. Clockwork, very Clockwork Orange, where if you actually look at Clockwork Orange. Alex is almost always in the middle yeah. of the shot. Like social network, that sort yes. of shot, shot with the music it's, background. Sorry, social network's a better example. It is yeah, very, so, like that network. scene where he's in his gown and he's going up to the office. Yeah, yeah. That kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, and I like social network. And, we and say, I like the fact it doesn't handhold you. You know, I like trying to get things oh, in context. Yeah. You don't, I don't need everything explained to me because it's just, what, you know what I mean? It's things and MacGuffins. You don't need to know what MacGuffins are. You know what I mean? No, no, that's true. But like the visual, the very, very true. You mean like it's, it's a MacGuffin, so you don't really need to explain. That's probably, probably I think Money that's Monster. For a film like like this Money Monster, I tried to explain to you what the MacGuffin was. 
it doesn't he's just lost 800 million that should be the end of yeah, it yeah exactly yeah no you're absolutely right the, the McGuffin in, in in money monster doesn't work we don't need that big reveal we don't, we, don't, need we don't care about that we care about the characters yeah, exactly. lost well, the money. yeah exactly that's what you care about you don't really need that no you don't we, need to explain the MacGuffin. no we, we, we know the infinity that stones in uh Marvel, they don't explain that they are just the MacGuffin. Yeah, you see, you see. That's why the Coen brothers always choose money because everyone knows what money is. So yeah. in every Coen brothers movie, it's money. That's yeah. what the MacGuffin is because we will understand. You don't have to explain it to you. I want money. You've got money. That's the, that's the MacGuffin yeah. in every single every well, single think Coen brother movie. With these films, though, the, the the difference being is that a lot of the audience, because of the crash, yeah, there's a there's a desire to understand how. It yes. happened, if and it, that's what we, we want yes, in these films. If you want to decide how to read a book, don't watch a film. <laughs> a film is there to entertain you, to like characters, you, story. Right. You are absolutely right. You, you are completely right there. Mm. A film is not there to educate, it is to entertain. But anyway, I haven't got to my... No, oh, sorry. We've gone round round to get to my rating. Yep. 12 pounds in a mile. <laughs> 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 I'm going to a definitely going to a fan cinema. Which puts it in first place. Yes. Because um, Money Monster was both a watch on TV. Yeah. We both gave four pounds to the big short. And this one with a four pound and a 12 pounds puts this on top. So believe it or not, considering it's the first film, these money films are actually getting worse as time's progressing. Yeah. That's, uh, which actually is how Hollywood works anyway, because yeah, they kind of scrape the barrel when yeah. they well, that's, run out of one was filmed like, at the height of the recession and we're getting further away from the recession to this probably yeah. definitely well, to explain the, it. to the point in Money Monster where it's not even about the recession. No, exactly. We're not going to tell you what films we're reviewing next week, but we're going to give you a hint to what the film is, what the theme is. The theme is L.A. Noir. No, oh, so come Ooh. back next week. <laughs> see what we're reviewing. You can probably guess what one of them is because it's the film that's out next week. But and we we may have said it during this already. But yeah. I might cut uh, that. So <laughs> we, we don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll, yeah, well you know, we're, we're we're nice guys. We'll see what we like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, we wouldn't do that to you. We're not like Ryan Gosling in no. sexy fume money. <laughs> <laughs> sexy fume in money. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're not. We wouldn't make a terrible. Uh, Robin Hood movie. No, it's not no. like we're just going to kiss kiss you and then bang bang off. You know, <laughs> like, we're just not going to do that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So until uh, next week. It's been a blast. <laughs>